Hello, this is Mike Leiber from Northern Kentucky University, and this is the second video in part one of Creating the Collective. So all of us are familiar with this series where Picard becomes a Borg, and uh, this is not what we're doing. So I just want to assure you that we are in the process of actually creating a different type of collective that actually helps students. So let's actually come up with a, a better definition of the uh, cyber awareness. And the collective... Uh, present development is a cyber aware intelligence system, we call it a case, with the goal of optimizing a student's performance in an online course. So the collective goal is to interact with a student and improve a student performance. So the uh, collective will be able to uh, record everything the student does, see its scores, and adjust the information that the student sees based upon its performance. So as opposed to interacting with just a database, the student will actually be interacting with a cyberware or with an intelligence that will help them improve their performance. And so that's one of the purposes that we have going on here. Typically what you find in a learning management system or stuff like a login system, single password, introduce yourself, announcement, syllabus, calendar, blog, content system, discussion board, student journal, file upload, link, video player, quiz, surveys, email systems, upload systems, links, uh, frequently asked questions, book uh, writer, movie writer, maker, stuff like that. And in this particular collective, we'll be looking at a simple login system, an introduce yourself system, announcements, syllabus, calendar, link, and video, survey, links, and frequently asked questions. And we'll be uh, working with the system in a sense, it'll be all coming from an XML uh, RSS DOM, which will be calling its own interfaces, recording everything that's going, and interacting with the student in a sense to obtain the goal of the collective. Once again, we won't be using table table a databasing will be table file or table table file and we'll use a Cairngorm as the state model to record all this information of course the conclusion is here we've got some great plans for paper vision you bet we're not going to just create pretty websites we're going to create some incredibly dynamic stuff so let's get started okay now it's time to give the Borg a heartbeat now the way the collective works is it works on a singleton principle all data is transferred to the singleton and upon each heartbeat that data is transferred around the system. Let me show you how that works. We're going to look at the code first. Here it is. And you can type password. That's the password. And all this is on Google code as I showed you earlier in the first video. And you can pan along here and here's this uh, paper vision uh, wheel and here's what seems to be a typical webish looking interface but it's not web at all. It actually works on a whole bunch of different principles. Let's take a look at the flex code right here. Here the collective, and we come into the library, and in the library you can see there's that Cairngorm SWIC file that I pr produced from the Cairngorm site. You can actually go look that up. And uh, it's that site which possesses the singleton model that allows the data to be transferred around. Let's take a look at the singleton real quick. If you go to net, go to net, David Tucker, it's his model, and go down to contact manager, and there's a models and views. Let's go to model, and there's my singleton. When I open that up, you can see here's my mighty single singleton and down here at the bottom are my model locators and I have a people array I have a my state number my state's name and I have a my start it up boolean not a lot yet but we're going to be adding through this throughout the process so basically what's happening here is I'm using state programming now what is state programming well someone who does a real good job of explaining that is William Sanders he's done a lot of great work over the uh, past years I've been watching him just wrote a tremendous book on the flash comm server and what William talks about basically is how state machines work He's got some state diagrams here. Let's go take a look at one real quick. So we're looking at uh, Bill Sanders' state chart for a simple machine. This would be like a video player where you stop and play. And there's an initial state, there's a stop state, and there's a play state. So what is a state pattern or a state machine? Well, at the basic level, a state chart is an illustration of the application states and transitions, and that's all there is to it. But in the Singleton model, we keep track of that, and we transfer that to the... Uh, rest of the application upon each heartbeat. Now let's go ahead and continue with our explanation of our program. Of course you can get all this code on my Google code. I've already said that earlier. And if you want to learn more about the Cairngorm and MVC architecture, just go to my YouTube right here. Uh, uh, named MVC and installing Cairngorm and Flex 3. That's on YouTube. www.youtube forward slash watch this number that I don't want to repeat. And the point is that the data goes to the singleton and on every heartbeat is transferred. But it's the program actually keeps track if there's been a change or not so it won't transfer data unless it's been changed state is very powerful and it saves tons of space just a quick point here states in flex 3 
and state programming are not the same thing. In Flex3, states basically is a frame mechanism, and in state programming or state machine, it's a state of being, kind of. And I already mentioned William Sanders' work, and we've taken a look at that. Now let's actually start looking at the program and see how all this works. So let's go to the Flex program itself and um, go to the, co the collective, and we can see there's all these different states. Where I, I don't know what that means uh, code-wise, so let's take a look at it visually. Let's hit Design. And I'm in the design mode right now, and I'm going to come along here and click on state, and that's, once again, that's the frame mechanism. And I've created all these different states, announce, calendar, frequently asked questions, intro you, um, link videos, links, singleton, or simple login, excuse me, for splash screen, survey, and syllabus. And these, all the states are transferred around based upon what comes from the singleton or the heartbeat. Now let's go ahead and follow the program through and show you how the start heartbeat is created. The program is initialized, and here's the initialization statement on application complete. So in the initialization function, we have the heartbeat, and we have the mylec.data.send. That's actually the images for the uh, circular uh, pano that you saw earlier in the uh, splash screen. So heartbeat's what we're interested in right now. So if you click on heartbeat, it takes you to this function down here, and it creates a timer. And what the timer is doing, it's actually uh, ticking away at this my current state. Now this ticks four times a second. We can speed it or slow it, but we're going to go for four times a second right now for writing the program. And so what it's going to be doing, it's going to hit this switch case statement. And then the switch case statement is looking at the model locator that's coming from the singleton. So it's going, hey, am I in case one? Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 0 basically is a login. And then from there, you can go into any state you want to. You can see all the states we have, your calendar, survey, links, uh, frequently asked questions. So all the states that we talked about creating earlier are here, and it pushes you into those different states. Now, we've got to take a little bit, little look at the data. That's pretty much the program. That's all there is to it. Below that, that's the uh, paper vision piece that allows that circular uh, panel to occur. Let's take a look at the data and see what we can understand from that. So I'm come along here. And initially, I have my, my topics data, or topics data.xml. When I look at that, here's the power of the collective. Right here are the names of the program that it calls so its data can live in. See? So intro U is a different interface, and announce is a different interface, and syllabus is a different interface. So it calls its own interface. Now that's the table. And along with that comes a file. So if you go into these different uh, categories, I'm going to take a look at this. We have all the files here that are called by the tables. And that's pretty much all there is to this present program. We've set up the framework. We've got the heartbeat working. And next time, we're going to build out all these different components. So here you'll learn a lot about Flex, but you also learn a lot about working with the DOM. So pretty much the context of the next series of lectures will be working with the DOM for the collective.